Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me check my time before I forget. Is it morning? Oh, it's afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Jago and Binda, for this warm welcome. I'm really very impressed to stand before you here today. It's not my first time to be in the, in the B Symposium here. This is now my third time, though I've been participating virtually online. For those of you who have who has been watching uh, YouTube videos about a young boy who is trying to teach beekeeping in Uganda, this is me. I am very honored to be today here in Waima for the 11th B Symposium. I've always been giving our time to my translator, that is Bernard. I think today you will have a chance to ask me for a repeat because I'm always very fast in the video because it is limited. So I try to cover up very many things within five minutes. But today, I'm not going to give you our time. Uh, you have a chance to ask for a, a, re a repeat. Uh, let me tell uh, something small about me. Uh, by the names, I'm called Lawrence Ayo. I hold a certificate in beekeeping, a diploma in beekeeping. As I talk right now, I'm doing a course uh, at the university, I'm doing Bachelor of Science Biological with a major emphasis put on botany and zoology, that is plants and animals. I'm in my final year. I'll be finalizing in December. I'm also an instructor in beekeeping in Nyabia Forestry College. It is an institute that uh, produces every year foresters and beekeepers. Before I begin, it is very important to know where you are coming from. You may be asking, how did you meet Jorgen? We met during one of their trip in Uganda in 2019, where I am currently teaching beekeeping, which every year we produce beekeepers, professional beekeepers, with a certificate and diploma. That is how we got to meet in the institute during their visit in Uganda. I believe some of the members are here, including Jagan himself. When Jagan and other friends of Ambosa came to Uganda, they met me in Nyabia Forestry College. And we interacted a lot. I shared out my idea as a young person. Because in Uganda, if you talk about beekeeping, people just say, oh, that is just something that uh, we have been doing for long. But people don't take it as something that supports livelihood. When Jogan came, I shared my idea to him. I said, I can teach beekeeping to my community in Uganda as one of the livelihood activities that supports people. Definitely, he took it up and said, I will share your idea to the friends of Amboxa in Germany. Then I said, I'll be very pleased to accept when they uh, respect the idea that I shared with you. And thereafter, I gave the project a name, call it Happy Forestry. If you were, if you were to say Happy Forestry, Happy, I'm trying to mean beekeeping, because if you look at the rate at which people are cutting down trees in my area, it is estimated at 40 football fields every minute. Why? People are looking for alternative source of income. Yeah? 
So people go in the forest and cut down trees for charcoal burning to get a living or yeah, income. Then I said, okay, if that's the case, let's get an activity that people practice within the forestry, within the forest, so that indirectly people benefit from the forest without cutting it down. Then I said, let's integrate beekeeping within the forest so that people indirectly benefit from the trees without cutting it down. Then I gave it that name, Api Forestry. Api means uh, apiculture than forestry trees. It started in 2017. It was my idea alone. I could move in the villages. I teach people that beekeeping, it is one of the activity that if you do it, you can not go wrong. You can as well get something from beekeeping. Unlike in the past, people take beekeeping as something that you just put it there, you get a hive and you throw it in the forest and the bees come and colonize it, but no management. And people just go there and open hives in December and they harvest for Christmas. And I said, no, look, we have to change our thinking about those insects. They are as well income generating activities. So I started it in 2017 alone, and not until when Jorgen and other friends of Ambosa came, and we got our first support in 2019 with the amount of 2,000 euros to implement the activity further in the area. We got our second donation again in, two, uh, in, two, in 2021 for additional support. And the purpose of the, demo, uh, the donation was to train the community uh, in beekeeping in order to support their livelihood. And that is what I'm trying to do right now with my community in Uganda. <laughs> that is uh, the map. The project is located in the northern part of Uganda. If we all know in the history, in the past, what has been happening, northern part of Uganda, it's, one, it's part, of the, uh, part of Uganda which has been disturbed for over 20 years by the Lord Resistant Army. And people are re rehabilitating themselves. The standard of living has gone down, and people are looking for alternatives. Climate change is coming. Agriculture is no longer, crop production is no longer supporting people now encroaching into the forest to cut, burn down trees for charcoal burning. But I said, okay, look, there's another alternative. So the project is located in the northern part of Uganda uh, in a district called Pade District in a very sub-county. That is the extract of the map. That is just a look of the demonstration site that we have. Now, what are we doing? How are we implementing the idea? How am I implementing the idea? First of all, I said, okay, I cannot do it in the whole country of Uganda. Let me just select a section that I selected in the district and I started forming groups. And in the group, I have a total of 20 members who are the beneficiaries of this project that is uh, funded or supported by Am uh, Ambrosa uh, Beekeepers School in Germany. We have 15 members, I uh, mean 20 members, 15 are men and 5 are women. You may be asking why, uh, why are, men, are women very few? When I, when I was trying to form up this group, I tried to consult as many women as possible. Of course I wanted them to occupy the 15 because of gender sensitive. But most of them that I approached, they said, our, our beekeeper, beekeeping is for men. Then I said, oh, but you can as well do it. So I got only five, but I hope as we progress, we shall bring in more women into the group so that we make up, uh, they occupy the bigger percentage in the group. So the group is comprised of both uh, youth and elderly, both disabled and non-disabled, because disabled can as well, as they say, disability is not inability. They can as well do beekeeping. 
Uh huh. That is a section of uh, the, the members of the group who are benefiting. So, in the implementation, we have activities, the training activities that we do so that people get the real concept of the group. So, these are some of the training activities that we carry out during our training. Number one, we start, I basically train basic beekeeping because I don't want to complicate life because most of the members in the group are people who have not gone further in land. So I don't want to talk so much on biology of bees and something like that. So I want to be as, 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 as easy as possible so that they understand it better. So I teach them the basic skills on how to set up apiary, attracting the bees into the apiary, apiary maintenance, hive inspection, pest management stroke control, marketing strategy, creativity on how to make beehives. Because people always say, you want us to commercialize on beekeeping, but the hives are very expensive. Langstroth is very expensive. I said, look, with the little that we have around, you can as well start beekeeping and you become a commercial bee, bee farmer. So I teach them creativity on making beehives. I teach them how to process different hive products because at the end of it, you want to sell out your product to the consumers and you must know the skills of processing these hive products you are getting from the bees. I, above all, I teach them bee forage establishment because for you to get a bountiful production, you must know the source. Because our bees cannot naturally depend on the forage that they collect from outside, but we have to supplement by planting more bee forage around our apiary. So, value addition. In order to attract market, in order to attract customers outside, I teach them you, we have to add value to different hive products that we get. Because if you just invest your honey and take in the market when you have not added value in it, then it will fetch low market. So I train them how to add value to different hive products. If you can see here, this is a honey wine. And if you process and pack like this, and you take it in the market, people will, will, will buy it. But when you just process and pack in, in the Cavera, people will not buy. So I teach value addition to honey wine, honey, propolis, and others. Oh, training session. Here, I teach them how to maintain apiary, slashing the apiary, as you can see here. Then training how to set up apiary. Oh, here what's happening. Our beekeepers needs to know different component of the hive because it's very important when a visitor comes into our apiary, you have to be in a position to tell that this is the the, the top bar hive, this is the lead, this is the bottom board, yeah? Because now, at the end of it all, you have to speak the language that unifies all beekeepers all over the world, not locally. So here, I'm trying to teach them the component of the hive. Here, what's happening is processing beeswax from the empty combs. So, I have passion for bees, and I want at least all Ugandans to participate, especially in a commercial scale. So, I always organize workshop, invite beekeepers, at least in five districts to come. So, I organize workshop to train them. So, if you can see here what's happening, it's a workshop ongoing, and there, 
I'm trying to demonstrate to, to them how to, to uh, approach the hive when you are harvesting over there. Uh -huh. Here still, training on going here, how to uh, approach the hive, both uh, modern type and the, the local type. I talked about uh, forage establishment. We need to supplement bees with the natural forages that they get from outside. So what we do here, we raise this forage in the nursery, take them in the field to plant for the bees. They have to know the basic. Then here, training also ongoing, because uh, before taking them in the field, you have to brief them on what to do, lining up, beating out, so those basic. And later on, you go in the field and you, you carry on with the activities. Uh -huh. Here, we said attracting bees into the hive. So different methods are used, because now if you don't teach them, some, they will just go there and have the hives and throw them howly just like that. And it will take over years without bees coming into the hive. So I train them techniques on how to attract the bees into the hive by baiting, using different baiting materials. Here the members are baiting using the bees' wax. And here inspection is ongoing. Aha! Uh -huh. After attract, after baiting, you need to take it outside to attract swarms. So here members are carrying the baited beehives, taking it outside for, for attracting the swarm. Uh -huh. The different types of hives are used in Uganda, but majorly the common ones that we use are six types. We have KTB hive in our piary, which is 50 in numbers, we have 10 log hives. We have the Langstroth hive, few of them. We have 10 tire hives, the five pot hives, and six basket hives. So in total, we have 83. Oh, this is a picture showing. We have the KTB hive, the Langstroth, the pot hive, this is a traditional one. Of course, we can't for, you know, leave culture, it's there, we, we also, because I say, with the little that you have, you can begin beekeeping. So we encourage them also to use the local type. Then there is basket hive here, made of reeds and grasses wrapped over. Then the tire hive, we teach them, because now people are throwing away this used tire. We say, no, you can buy and start with the beekeeping and it's yielding well, yeah. In a cheaper way, because now they can't afford to buy the long stroth hive, which are very expensive, and the KTB hive. So with the little that you have, you can as well begin. Oh. So uh, in summary, we have 40 hives that are colonized with the bees. 42 are yet to be colonized. And in, at first, we had over 60. But because of constant attack by, by safari ants, that I will talk about it later, the number reduced up, uh, up to 40. Then, let's try to relate beekeeping in relation to livelihood support. So on average, a KT beehive in Uganda produces 20 to 30 liters of honey per year. And the local hive then produces a half of it, that is 10 to 15 liters of honey per year. So on average, if a farmer wants to really do something to support his or her livelihood, then each KTB hive gives 25 euros on average per year. Then the local type gives 15 euros on average per year. Therefore, if a farmer has 30 KTB, then he or she can produce 600 to 900 liters of honey per year, which is an equivalent to 1,200 euros to 1,800 euros. Then a farmer who has 30 local hives 
he can now then produce 300 to 400 liters of honey per year, which is an equivalent to 600 to 840 euros on average. Therefore, a minimum number of 20 KTBs or 40 local beehive can support average family in Uganda. And that is the simple basic knowledge that I teach them that you can now see. If you can get this, then why should you go in the forest to cut down trees? There is life here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, so here, uh, just briefly, the, the, the marketing of uh, different hive products. Uh, some people pack them and sell in their home or in the street. Uh, some people pack and take in the supermarket, in the shop, and also on the street, as you can see these women are doing. Yeah. So what are the achievements so far we have registered during the three years operation since this project began? Number one, as I talk right now, the project is sitting on one and a half acres of land, which is fully owned by the project. It is not uh, rented, it is fully owned by the project. We have bought one and a half acre of land to restrict movement into the apiary, we managed to fence all this one and a half acre where the demonstration is set. We managed to form a group. 40 hives are now colonized. Indiscriminate cutting down of trees has gradually reduced, especially in the area, because members can now benefit from the trees without cutting it down. As you can see from this, a lorry load with the sacks of charcoal got from the forest, but it has now reduced. Then in this photo here, it is showing that because the objective of this project was at the end of the training, members are supposed to be distributed with the hives so that they begin. Because what we have is the demonstration site that members get knowledge. But the end of it wanted that at least a member should walk away with it, a hive to begin. So in the second donation, I bought hives and distributed to the farmers. Sorry? Uh huh. Then 75% of the members are now practically trained on practical bee skills. So I am sure they are implementing what we train them. We always get a lot of exploitation from farmers, especially within the country. As one of the measures to cut it down, we registered a company called Pieter Ani. And that company is one of the, the requirements for you to export your product outside the country. So we managed to register our own company and we are able to supply Germany uh, across Europe with the products, honey, beeswax, and many others. Uh -huh. Talking of the protective suit, we, at first we had only two, but now with the, the second donation, we managed to increase on the number. Now we have five protective suits. And as we all know, all beekeeping trainings are 100% practical. So we encourage members to participate because they are saying that I learn when I do it myself. So this is just training now taking place. Oh, other projects that the, 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 the group is doing. Because I tell my members that climate change is real and we need to be flexible. You get the point? You need to be flexible. So me being a scientist, I always look for solution. I look solution. I look for solution to the problem. So I said, okay, look members, there are also other sources that we can also fetch money. So we are, we are also doing other projects. So, as I talk right now, we have a tree nursery that produces clonal eucalyptus. 
Then we also train them on how to establish plantation. Okay? Because now you buy from her seedlings, then now there are some uh, uh, customers that w who need that. Okay, you help me and plant it out. So I'm training them on how to establish a plantation. Then there is a trial on this. Sericulture, rearing of silkworm. So I'm trying to see if it can work out, but it's on a small scale. But if I can get support, push it on a large scale so that we can supply silk material all over Europe and the world. We also have trials on demonstration of, on, 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 I mean, the, on the domestication of stingless bees. And we have so far two colonies. It has registered some success. So I believe if we can get some spot, we can push it on to a, a bigger scale. Because it is still a virgin uh, you know, enterprise that very many people uh, have not taken up. Ah, so have there. Also hier halten wir auch noch Rinder. Was man hier sieht, sind Fischers, Fischernetze. Und einige beschäftigen sich auch damit und auch Ziegenhaltung. Was sind die Herausforderungen? Da sind natürlich überall Herausforderungen. Through it was faster. Uh, limited numbers of hives. The limited numbers of hives are thus to meet the objective of the project, we say that at the end of it, we want at least every member to have what to start with. So we, we still have a limited numbers to distribute to the, these farmers that we have trained, and they are 95% now ready to start the, the business. Exploitation from the middlemen. You see this one here. They buy from our farmers at a, local, uh, at a cheaper price and they sell it out expensively. So they, we are getting this problem. That's why I said, okay, let me open up a company so that I don't sell it locally. I sell it globally at a very relatively higher price and I avoid this one here, the middleman. Limited numbers of protective suit. Of course, I talked about it, beekeeping uh, trainings are 100% practical. So I need to engage all of them into doing this practically. So we still have limited. Constant attack from pests on, uh, on the stands and the bees themselves. Of course, the serious thing here. As we can, we are going to listen to one of the lessons on the safari ants. This hive was badly attacked by the safari ants and bees absconded. Poor transport. A quarter of the donation goes for transport, collecting equipment, making a follow-up to, to farmers to see whether they are, they are doing the right thing. So the transport is really very poor and very expensive. Then the few technical staff. I said that I started the project alone and I'm still in alone because I can't afford to get uh, technical staff to come and support me uh, in training the farmers, especially when there is need and lack of motivation. And here comes me as a person. When I get the donation, I disperse it to the community for the maybe to meet the objective of the the training. So I always, uh, you know, remain with nothing or completely. But anyway, shall talk about later. Uh -huh. So these are some of the, the common honeybee pests that we have in our apiary. We have these the sugar ants, we have the hive beetles, and there is this ants, very stubborn safari ants. Then we have this small mammal, this one, the rats, and this organism which is becoming the order of the day, covering the whole page in Europe, varroa mites. Then the wax moth. So, as I as I, as I look forward to wind uh, my presentation, I have a very simple video that I want to play on the lesson on safari ants attack. Can it be played? Ah, uh, there's a technical problem there. Okay, let's proceed.
So what, is the, what are some of the recommendations that I have drawn as I conclude? Technical staff has to be recruited to add on me. Transport at least for the project, especially in movement around, buying equipments and the rest, more B suits uh, should be bought and at least to cover half of the, the, uh, the members. A store for processing and storage of, uh, of equipment and many others. Uh, then we should also have uh, to change from the traditional fox stand that we have to a metallic stand. More hives to be distributed to the farmers, at least as a motivation. Uh, a project organizer should at least get something per month. So that means we need more uh, donation for the project. Aha. Uh -huh. In every aspect, accountability is very, very important. Because in even the speech you make, you have to account for, for it. And that's why you see people giving summary at the end of their speech. So this is the accountability for the first donation that we got in 2019. We bought 50 KTB hives. We bought bee suits, uh, LAN, gumboots, uh, bee smoker, barbed wire for fencing, stationery, nails, armors, beeswax and the rest. So we used a total of 1,928 1, euros and the balance was 71.25 euros. This is the accountability for the second donation that we got of recent. We, we added on the, the numbers of the hives, we bought 100 and I said we distributed it to the farmers and we have added in a half an acre of land and the bee suits, two of them, beeswax, Metallic stand, transport and allowance, and we used a total of 1,980 euros. The balance was 80,000, that is 20 euros. So, uh, because of technical problem, we ha uh, this was uh, uh, one of the members who, who, who gave his vote of thanks to the members, but because of the, tech the video couldn't play, so I'm going to skip it. So as I wind down my presentation, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to you, the friends of Amsakule, uh, uh, for, for, the, for the donation that you have been giving us. And we are really kicking up, and the project is really embarked into the life of the use of the community that I train. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Der kennt sich aus. Jeder hat ja einen anderen Fokus. In äh, Uganda hat man den Fokus, seinen Lebensunterhalt zu bestreiten. Und ich glaube, für uns ist der Blick äh, darauf äh, noch interessanter, was er vorhin gesagt hat. Wer sich seinen Lebensunterhalt mit Bienen, Honig und sonstigen Bienenprodukten äh, beschaffen kann, muss keine Bäume mehr abholzen. Und da ist für, aus, für uns ist es die noch wichtigere Botschaft, dass wir äh, in den Möglichkeiten, die wir haben, mithelfen, dafür zu sorgen, dass wir insgesamt äh, äh, nachhaltig arbeiten und nicht Raubbau an der Natur betreiben. Gell? Ich bin heute Morgen mit ihm vom Hotel dahergelaufen und er hat mir ein bisschen erzählt, was wir brauchen. Ich sage es euch jetzt, wir brauchen 32.000 Euro und wir brauchen ein Auto, ein Allradauto. Das muss natürlich kein neues sein, gell? Also es hören ja viele Leute zu, wenn einer einen Pickup hat, den er nicht mehr braucht und spenden will, der muss er funktionieren, gell? Ein Gruß brauchen wir keinen. Dann kann er mich anrufen oder kontaktieren oder auch jetzt schon mir das mitteilen. Also das ist also das Mindeste, so eine Tonne Zuladung brauchen wir also auf jeden Fall. Und äh, ansonsten haben wir ja jetzt hier unsere fleißigen Leute. Kommt da schon mal hier mit dem Spendentopf da nach vorne. 
Ähm, ich habe ihm gesagt, es ist jetzt nicht so einfach, diese Spendensumme da einzusammeln. Ist nicht unmöglich, aber es dauert natürlich dann eine Weile. Ein, zwei Jährchen wahrscheinlich schon. Äh, aber was wir machen können, ist nicht Honig. Honig soll er auf dem lokalen Markt verkaufen. Aber was wir brauchen, ist sauberes Wachs. Hier wird keine Varroa-Behandlung gemacht. Da haben wir Wachs, das pestizidfrei ist. Ich habe ihm gesagt, er soll äh, Wachs äh, aus seinem Umfeld äh, aufkaufen oder aus von seinen Leuten und auch äh, eine Biozertifizierung erwirken für die Biobetriebe. Und dann soll er 80 Cent oder 1 Euro draufschlagen als Projekt und ich, ich kaufe ihm alles Wachs ab und wir machen da aus Mittelwände und stellen das bei uns zur Verfügung. So können wir am schnellsten helfen, wenn er im Jahr uns 10 Tonnen Wachs beschaffen und verkaufen kann, dann hat er 10.000 Euro eingenommen. Und so ist das Projekt dann auch im Laufe der Jahre sozusagen grundfinanziert. Gell? Und das werden wir machen. Und trotzdem, <lacht> komm mal her, also fangen wir jetzt an. Ich haue jetzt schon mal was rein und ihr Thank you. geht durch jede Reihe und in jeder Reihe wird eingesammelt. Gell? Also und die Tür ist zu dahinter. Ja? Also vielen Dank, Ajo, für deinen wunderbaren Vortrag. Ich wünsche dir, es geht nicht nur ums Geld, Geld ist auch wichtig, das ist jetzt ein Investment, das wir machen. Wir haben gesehen, dass es gut ankommt, keine Verwaltung dazwischen, kein irgendwie Sekretariat, wo was versickert oder sonst wie, das Geld kommt zu dir, du machst was draus, in zwei Jahren ist zehn Jahre Armbrust der Imkerschule, da kommst du wieder und zeigst uns, wie du mit deinem Pickup 20 Tonnen Honig da in Uganda produzierst. Ayo, vielen Dank. Thank you. Thank you.